Hello and welcome to Transport Economics Level 3. I'm Ketla Rintingwe, lecturer for Transport Economics Level 3 and Level 4 from Obed Tivet College, Mangwe Campus. I'm going to take you through the whole syllabus for the whole year. So if you don't have your textbook with you, which you call a guide, or you don't have anything to write with or anything to write on or a highlighter, please go fetch it. I'm presently going to play you a video clip that reminds those remaining behind as you go fetch your textbook, which you call your guide, your pen, something to write with, something to write on, and some highlighters, because throughout the lecture, I'm going to take you through the pages. So this video will lead us through transport operation of all the different modes. Modes of transport. Land transport. Water transport. Air transport. Land transport. Bus. Car. Auto. When. Fire engine. Ambulance. Truck. Motorbike. High cycle. Rickshaw. Look hard. Train. Metro train. Water transport. Ship. Catamaran. Yacht. Air transport. Aeroplane. Helicopter Paragliding Air Balloon I hope you have enjoyed the video and it reminded you everything that you learned in level 2. Now, as you know, Transport Economics level 3 is all about legislation and regulation of the transport industry. Legislation is a piece of law usually written, passed by parliament and signed by the state president. Any rules, any regulations, any memos, any circulars, any policies, speeches by legitimate authorities, 
may be used as legislation. Regulation, on the other hand, is the adjusting, the organizing, or controlling of something. We are continuing with legislation as we introduce it now. Every day, we see some patterns, like we saw in the video. We see practices, we see conduct of transport operators. operators. We see consumer behavior, consumers of transport. And then, what is being regulated is routes, loads, which side of the road to drive, which side of the road to overtake on, the age of drivers, the sizes of the roads, the names of the roads and streets, specifications for constructing the infrastructure, etc., etc., etc. All these form part of regulation and they are the measures of regulation as legislated. And the purpose of this is on page four of your textbook to page 16, and please study them for examination purposes. The government also regulates the consumer behavior through two strategies that you find on page five. Both of them regulate consumer behavior in that they drive them towards public transport. And then if you have legislation in place, we cannot just continue operating without planning first. So what is the importance of planning? Number one, the main goal of planning is to ensure efficient interaction between society and the economy. Hence, our subject is called transport economics. Planning for transport includes all aspects of transport systems. Transport systems includes every place and everything from where you stay to your destination, including everything else that you pass on your way. Planning and execution is done by government. And you read about this from page 17 to page 29 of your textbook. And remember, economy can be measured either by micro means or by macro means. The measurement of performance of the economy can be done by an individual or an individual business, naming it, making a study of it, and that is called microeconomics. But if we measure the performance of the whole country's economy, we call that macroeconomics. So when doing the planning and the operation of transport, the, I refer you to page 30 to page 36 of your textbook. Then one wonders why government is worried about regulating transport. And then how does it do it? Then the answer is, it is done through the acts which are originated from the Department of Transport, the National Department of Transport. It is therefore very important that you zoom into the position of the Department of Transport, explore its structure. By the way, this is one of your potential employment destinations. And the Department of Transport has duties that are so huge and that are varied. Therefore, the Department of Transport uses the services of agencies. And about the agencies, you read from page 37 to page 45 of your textbook. An agency, by the way, is a business or an individual or an organization providing a particular service on behalf of another business, on behalf of another person or group. And that group is called a principal. And when you are an agent, you earn 
commission and what you do is called your mandate. Now, as the Minister of Transport must originate the law, I'm going to take you through how a law is made. A law that I'm going to deal with is called an Act of Parliament. And you may end up working in the National Department of Transport as the Honorable Minister, or as a Director General, or just an employee. So how are you going to originate a new law? It's very easy. Please read about the check, the build-up on pages 46 to page 50 of your textbook. It gives you what is it that is necessary for the formation of a law. And then there are steps and that have a formal chronological order that you must learn and know for future implementation. And this is going to be used also in your examination. How does a written law look like? Because I don't have a copy with me now, please download any act or buy it from government printers, they cost a mere five rand, or ask any court of law so that you can make yourself a small lawyer. By the way, the reality in South Africa is this, that there is an acute shortage of transport lawyers. Then you will be, when you go through this piece of legislation, you'll be introduced to the name of the act, its number and year, president's signature or affirmation thereof, the main purpose of the act, definitions, etc., etc., etc. Some of them are on page 53 to 57 that have to do with transport. And please learn these for examination purposes. Because this is all about the law, you know that people will be tempted to commit crime. And crimes that are committed using transport or against transport are referred to as transport-related transgressions. I said they are so-called transport-related transgressions because they are either committed against transport operation or committed using transport vehicles or systems. This is where you apply the transport and other acts to make sure that you define and manage these transgressions and crimes. As you go through these transport-related transgressions that are on page 59 to page 99, make sure that you can define them that you can see the steps of managing them and which agencies are managing them. Then you have reached page 100. Page 100 has exam type questions. How are you going to deal with this? Please take a step back, revise everything that you have read, then set up a virtual exam center, answer the questions on page 100, then go back to the textbook, make your own accurate memorandum. Take a red pen, mark for yourself, and oh, if you didn't get 100%, write again tomorrow to obtain a better mark. You will repeat the same procedure until you can score 100% out of those questions. Then we continue with the transport agencies and policies. After originating and producing and promulgating the acts, you can draw up policies. The policies do not require the president to sign them, like the NetMap 2050, which we have already done, and you can regulate transport thereby. The more to be done, the more hands you need. Hence, there will be more agencies that you are going to study about. 
Please explore all this and leave no stone unturned. Some policies come before others and are said to be critical, like we have seven critical government policies. Please study them. They are on page 101 to page 124. And we continue with more agencies after reading. As you will be doing the study of these agencies, please make a distinction between public and private transport, passenger and freight transport in all the five modes of transport. And as you will be studying this, this is what you must be looking for. It is stated which agency is established in terms of which act, how the agency is funded, for which mode it is formed, the makeup of that mode of transport as well as the size, whether it's private or public how all these agencies manage when carrying out their mandate, and how each agency is contributing to the economy. All this will take you from page 126 to page 199. But, NB, if you know what they do, if you know, if you know what the agencies do, there is no need to read from the textbook their contribution because whatever they do, how many people they employ, and what taxes they pay, and what procurement they are faced with, and what is it that they are doing, then you can write it from your understanding. Then the last chapter is about the disputes and appeals. What is it that you are disputing? What is it that you are appealing? This covers the failed application you made for operating licenses. Remember, before you operate your own bus company, before you operate your own trucking company, or even a taxi, you need an operating license. You make an application, it may be allowed or turned down. So if, if you are denied that business opportunity, there are two agencies who can help you out. These two agencies, look at how they are structured, how they operate, the powers they have, and this is a short one from page 200 to page 210. After having gone through all this, you will have made yourself a transport attain. And just before we end this, the textbook that I've been talking about is this one produced by Tidasa. And uh, the questions on page 100, I'll take you through them and let you know how you should handle this. Question one says, explain how legislation and regulations guide the transport industry within the wider economy and describe the importance of establishing a regulated transport environment. This is a cumbersome question because it has many more questions inside in it. For examination purposes, you will be, to, you will be asked, explain how legislation and regulation guide the transport industry. Or you'll be asked to describe the importance of establishing a regulated transport environment. So when you answer this question, make sure you take the first part of it, answer it, and the second part of it, answer it as well. Question two, explain the importance of planning and it is coupled with the importance of policy development for the transport industry. 
There are two questions. Please answer them separately. Question three. Outline with examples a macro and micro view of transport economic planning. In this instance, you outline the examples of macroeconomics, macroeconomic view of transport planning, and then part B thereof, the micro view of transport economic planning. Question four, describe the role of, the role and function of the transport department. It must be described the role of the transport department. And the second one is describe the function of the Department of Transport within the South African government structure. Question five. Draw a diagram or a model illustrating how transport legislation is developed, verified, and promulgated. And uh, just like you see it on page 51, they go from bo dialogue box to another dialogue box. They are in a chronological order, and you just have to follow the arrows from number one. So the best thing will be take your pencil, identify the need or the problem. That's number one. Number two, research and consult the interest parties. Number three, prepare draft legislation under the direction of the Minister of Transport. And the arrow goes down to the National Department of Transport submits a cabinet memorandum and the draft bill. And so it goes until you reach question, I mean, step number 14. Question six, name the acts and regulations applicable to this industry. So you'll either name the act, I mean, you have to name the acts first, and you name the regulations that are applicable to the transport industry. And just like I told you, you will also describe the origin, the main aims and purposes of those listed acts. Question seven, define typical transport-related transgressions. And you provide examples. If you define, you can use your own words, not that you have to memorize the words in the textbook. And you give examples that are happening in South Africa. And please do all of them. Question eight, identify structures in, and departments within the government that are responsible for managing those transgressions. Some of them, as you know, like South African police services, are not in the Department of Transport but you have to know each one of them. Question nine, steps of managing transport-related crimes or transgressions. Also on page 211, you have summative assessment of topic two, which are also examination type questions. And please, the introduction says it's compulsory to answer all the questions and you number them clearly. And the first question is to list the seven critical policies of the Department of Transport. Describe the main aim and purpose of each of the policies as numbered there. To discuss with examples the makeup and size of the South African passenger and freight transport market. They are using the word makeup here because makeup, ladies know, are applied to the faces. And if you know a person, you, you say, I know this face. Therefore, as you step out of your house, look into the streets like you saw in that video clip, you see types of different vehicles moving around. That is called the makeup. For example, if you are in Lesotho, you'll probably see more of horse rides. 
if you are in Botswana, the traffic is made mostly of taxis, which are sedans. Unlike in South Africa, where you get minibuses and midi buses, that is the makeup. Size will refer to the number of people using this type of transport and also number of vehicles on the road. Question four, differentiate between private, public passenger transport markets, differentiate between public freight transport markets, Four questions there. Number one is differentiate between private passenger transport market. The second one, private freight transport market. Number three, public passenger transport market. And number four, freight transport market. Question five, define government agencies and explain the need for government agencies within the transport industry. List various government agencies responsible for regulating air transportation. Question seven, briefly describe the role and responsibilities of the following agencies that are listed there. Question eight, Describe the contribution of each of the responsible for regulating air transportation. May I repeat that? Describe the contribution of each of the agency responsible for regulating air transport to the wider economy. And question nine, list various government agencies. Question 10, the role and responsibilities of the following agencies. Question 11, the contribution of each. Ensure you take note of everything. The more you understand and learn, the better than memorizing. One of the ways to make you understand is to ask around for more answers. And good luck in your studies and your subsequent assessment. Thank you.